Hi, my name is Ms. Hansen, and I'm recording a new way to balance. Many of us are not as mathematically inclined as we had wished, and myself, when I was in high school, I struggled with balancing chemical equations. In fact, I used to post on my bulletin board in class my C's and D's that I scored when I was in this process of learning. And it's very challenging for me to learn how to balance a chemical equation. So it took me a while, and I finally found that I was a visual learner, and by coloring the elements different colors and not worrying about the chemistry, I was instead able to balance things in a color way. Now, Mr. McLeod was teasing me and saying you should call it the rainbow method, so Mr. McLeod helped me name the rainbow method. But you can see in the first problem that I colored every element a different color. Now, each element on the left side of the equation, which is called the reactant side, will also be found on the product side. Okay. We're balancing the atoms, meaning the same number of greens or the same number of sodiums should be found on both sides of the equation. In this example, however, there are three sodiums here and only one sodium here. So we want them both to be three. We do use the distributive property of math, but before I get fancy with math terms, if this side is three, I need this side to be three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a three right here in front of Na. So visually, I can see there are three greens on this side and three greens on this side. Since I am satisfied with my green, I'm going to move on to the pink, which is the bromine. So now I can see on the reactant side, I had put a three right here in front of the pink. That means that there are also three bromines. However, on the other side, when I look at the pink, there's only one there. If there's not a number there, we know it's one. So how can I make this side equal three, just like over here? We're going to do that same thing. We're going to put a three in front as a coefficient. When I put a three here, it applies to both the hydrogen and both the bromine, or it applies to the yellow and the pink. So right now, the greens are both three, the pinks are both three, and we haven't addressed the yellow or orange. So I'm now going to draw our attention to the yellow. Right here, this yellow is three. And we had already put a three here to balance the pinks, so the yellow or the hydrogen is already three as well. So now that that is done, we're going to check the last color that is left, the orange. You have this group inside of the parentheses. You never have to break them up. You're going to keep them as one group. On the reactant side, there's only one phosphate group. So over here, we would only have one phosphate group as well. So it looks like the greens are both three, the pinks are both three, the yellows are both three, and the phosphates, or the oranges, are both one. Since each side is equal to each other, we'll put ones down. Another trick one of my students noticed when we were doing this in class was they said, if I use four different colors, does that make it a double replacement reaction? In a double replacement reaction, that's really the only time you would ever balance four different elements in the same problem. So for the type of reaction, you would do double replacement. So you would go through each problem until you get the hang of it, making sure you use colors. You would make sure that each group on the left had a match on the right, and you would color that. So the aluminum here is right there, and the Sulfate, oh, I didn't use orange yet. Okay. Another way to look at it is you have to have the same number of Lego pieces over here as your finished product. The calciums are exactly the same, so the yellows are checked off right away. Done. 
Next, I move to this green group that I highlighted. If you notice on the outside of the parentheses, there's three on the product side and only two here. In chemistry, when there's a 2-3 situation, we find a common factor. We know that the distributive or multiply property is going to be used. So the easy trick is to know that 2 times 3 is equal to 6, meaning we want both of these sides to equal 6 since that's something that 2 and 3 have in common. So if this is 3 and I want it to be 6, I'm going to put a 2 here. And this is 2, and I want it to be 6, I would put a 3 here. Uh-oh. By putting this 3 here, I all of a sudden messed up my yellows. Do you see how now the yellows are yellow? I'm sorry, the yellows are 3, and uh, now they're only 1 over here. So we need to fix that. 3 calcium, so 3 would go here because 3 times 1 is 3. So the yellows are happy again. The hydroxides are great. They're both 6. So I'm going to move to the pink. This one, the aluminums or the pinks are 2. And look at that. We had already put a 2 there for the hydroxide, so that's actually perfect. So now we move to the last color. We've checked the yellows, we've checked the greens, we've checked the pinks, so the only color we have left that's not balanced that we know of is orange. If you look at this SO4 in parentheses, you'll see that there's another SO4 over here. It's not in parentheses because proper chemistry, you just don't put sulfate unless it has a number outside in parentheses. But no worries, we'll put it in parentheses. Nothing wrong with it for balancing. So if you look at this side, 3 times 1 is 3 oranges, or 3 sulfates. So what we would do here is we would look at the products, the reactant side, and we would say, oh, look at that. There's already 3 sulfates. So the oranges were already balanced after we had put that 3 there. So we are completely done with this problem. And because we see 4 colors, we would say that that is a double replacement reaction. In the next problem, there's not going to be four colors because there's only three different elements. So looking at this, the yellows or the magnesiums are exactly identical right now. The pinks are not identical. So we need to put more pinks over here because there's two over here. We would need two over here. So I'm going to put the number two right here. So the yellows check out as one. The pinks check out as two. Are the oxygens matched? Are the greens finished? There are three over here, but there is only one right here. So we need to put something here to make that 3. 1 times 3 is 3. The mistake many students make is checking it off as done and putting a 1 here. However, when I put a 3 here for the oxygen, it should alert you, hey, I just changed that yellow one too. By putting this number here, I'm changing the yellow and the green. So, I'm going to have to change the magnesium on the other side to what number? You guessed it. We're going to need a 3 here because we had a 3 over here. Now, you'll notice that I only used three color highlighters on this problem because I only had three different elements. There are two plus signs. When there are two plus signs, you know it's either combustion, single replacement, or double replacement. There's not four colors, so it cannot be double replacement. It cannot be combustion, because I don't see carbon dioxide in water. So this must be a single replacement reaction, because there is one compound on both sides and one single
single element. So this is a single replacement reaction. The last type of reaction I want to show you is a combustion reaction. In a combustion reaction, you always balance the carbons first, followed by the hydrogen, followed by the oxygen. I'm going to color still. Until you get used to balancing, I would say color every one. There is not a teacher on this campus that's going to deny you the right to color on your test, so why not use it? Sometimes it visually helps you to build that wall so that you know where the, the sides are. Okay. So the first thing we always do is we balance our carbons. So see that two right there? We better have a two on this side. Ah, uh, that two right there is in the pink, so we're going to make sure that we make the yellow two. So there's two yellows here, or two carbons. So we need to put a two here. Now the carbons are happy, or the yellows are both two. I'm going to move naturally to the next element, hydrogen. There are four on this side. However, there's only two over here. But we know that two times two is four. Now the oxygen. We check the yellows, we check the greens, but these pinks are, are a pain. And that's because the oxygens, or the pinks, are split on the product side of the equation. So, we need to add the two oxygens together to get a total oxygen count. Two times two, remember we're only focusing on the pink right now, two times two means there's four oxygens in carbon dioxide, and then there are two times one, because keep in mind we're only counting the oxygens or the pinks, would be two. Four plus two is six. That number right there is the total oxygen from the product side. On the reactant side, however, we only have two. So we have to think what times 2 equals 6, 3 times 2 equals 6. All the colors are satisfied now, so if there's still a blank left over, let's slap a 1 up there. We know the type of reaction because it should be a dead giveaway if the only elements are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. It will always produce carbon dioxide and water if it is a combustion reaction. Now I know I told you that was the last one on page 7 that I was going to work, but I'd like us to go to page 8. Sometimes in balancing, there's certain tricks to the trade that will help you out. I want you to look at 18 and 19. There's a little hint to the side. The hint says, hey silly, if it helps, water can be written as HOH. We would never want to use this trick for a combustion reaction because it just doesn't help us. So the only time we would use this little magic trick would be if we have hydroxide on this side and no hydroxide on this side. This will make a lot more sense when you start coloring, so let me sh demonstrate why we would ever have to do that. When I look for my H, I see an H. When I look for my CL, I see my CL. When I look for my CA, I see my CA. But oh goodness, look at this. I have hydroxide over here, but there's no hydroxide over here. So how could I balance this with this method? What we're going to do, because H2O and HOH are still the same thing. There's still two hydrogens and one oxygen. We're just going to rewrite it. I'm going to do a little scratch out here, and I'm going to say HOH. Okay. I'm still going to color my H pink, and then my OH, I'll grab that orange marker. Here. 
All right. So now we're going to balance it. Are the pinks both one right now? Or are the hydrogens both one atom? In your brain, you can talk as fancy as you want. If you want to say the pinks are good, the yellows are good, talk to yourself in what makes sense to you. Hydrogens are both one. The pinks are both one. The yellows are not the same. This yellow has two. This yellow only has one. So to fix the problem, I need more chlorine on this side. So I'm going to put a two right here so that there are two chlorines here and two chlorines here. Now when I did that, my H or my pink is now two. So I need to make sure I go back and I write a two here. You'll notice through this video I never write ones until I have confirmed everything is balanced. Because sometimes you gotta go back and change numbers and you don't want to kill your eraser. You don't want your eraser looking like this or this or any of the other ones y'all leave on my floor when y'all leave. Okay. So to save eraser, don't write ones till the very end. Okay. Alright. So back to the problem. The pinks were both two. The yellows or the chlorines are both two. Now I'm moving to the greens. Sweet, the greens are already done. So the only color we haven't dealt with is the OHs. So you can see this one is two oranges, and this one, because we have the coefficient here, is also two oranges. Since everything is confirmed, or each set is equal on both sides, we can say that this equation is now balanced. So we would put a one in the empty spot. And again, for the type of reaction, since I see four distinctive different colors, I would say that this is a double replacement reaction. So anytime you are stuck in a situation where you have OH on one side and no OH on this side, you may change your water to H, parentheses OH, to work with to help you so that each side of the equation has the same set of elements or polyatomic ions to balance. Thank you for joining us for this tutorial. I hope that another method can open your way eyes up. Thank you. Yeah, because it's still flashing record. It was an 18-minute video.